We left off the last video with Pascal's triangle. We were trying to extend the pattern of numbers to include the next row. The first number is 1, then 5, the number after that is 10, then 10, then 5, and finally 1. Did you discover the secret to the pattern in Pascal's triangle? Each row starts with a 1, and then you add the two numbers above to get the next number. Let's look at one more row. The first number will be 1, then we add 1 and 5 to get 6. The next number will be 15, then 20, 15, 6, and 1. Here's a postage stamp from China with a diagram from The Precious Mirror of Four Elements, a book published in 1303. The title on the stamp tells us the diagram is Pascal's triangle. The numbers in the pattern are in Chinese, but once we know it's Pascal's triangle, we know what each of the numbers mean. The top number must be 1, so every time I see that symbol, the horizontal bar, it must be 1. If we look at the third row, the two horizontal bars must represent the number 2. Likewise, this symbol must be 3. So 3 bars represents the number 3, and 4 bars the number 4. How about this symbol? Well, if this is Pascal's triangle, then this must be the number 6. The next row is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1, so on and so forth. We can count in this number system because, as we said before, mathematics transcends language and translation. When I show this postage stamp to my classes, I sometimes give extra credit if a student can count to 50 in this number system. Not all the numbers are in the triangle, so to count to 50, you need to understand that number system. Next, let's take Pascal's triangle and push each row to the left, so it looks like this. Now, let's add up the numbers in the diagonals. The Fibonacci sequence appears. We have another example of two things in mathematics that initially seemed unrelated, and then we find that they actually have a close relationship. If you go on to take a statistics course, you'll see that each of the numbers in Pascal's triangle is connected to the probability of the occurrence of many of the events that surround us in the real world. Both Pascal's triangle and the Fibonacci sequence have many applications in the real world. That is, many things in the world around us organize themselves according to Pascal's triangle, while other things align themselves with the Fibonacci sequence. Because our two mathematical items are connected, it makes us wonder if there are hidden connections in the real world that are not always apparent when we first look at them. In these first few lessons, we have done some mathematics, observed ourselves doing mathematics, and looked at some connections within mathematics, among other things. Sometimes we understand things quickly, sometimes slowly, and sometimes we need to wait for someone to explain things to us before we can understand it all. So what attitude should we have about struggling with mathematics when things in mathematics don't come to us right away? We'll talk about that in the next lesson. I think you'll be surprised with what we come up with. See you then.